Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give all of you five tricks that you can use inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 to make your editing process a little bit smoother and easier. So the first trick relates to my basic editing workflow. So if I'm editing a video the first time through, I want to be making a whole bunch of cuts. So I would hit B to go to blade edit mode, and then I would hit spacebar or hit the play button over here so that I can have the video play back while I'm making basic edits. So while the video plays, I would go in here and just left click to make blade edit cuts wherever I think part of the video needs to be cut out and trimmed for the final edit. So while we go ahead and do this, we're going to end up with segments that we want to remove from our video. Now the base hotkey for removing part of your video and rippling everything to the right over to the left, filling in the black gap space is the delete key. However, on my keyboard and perhaps many keyboards, the delete key is kind of far to the top. So if you were to select a clip with the mouse by left click holding and dragging a box around your clip and then hitting the delete key, you may find that that actually takes a little bit of time. And more importantly, it also may end up using your mouse hand. So a better option would be to set a custom key binding that you like that you can access with your left hand while you're editing. So to do that, we can go up to the DaVinci Resolve menu in the top left, go down to keyboard customization. And in the search box, we're going to put ripple delete here. So you can see here that I have a custom key binding set to control plus space. You can hit the plus button here and set any key binding that you want. But what this allows you to do is that while you're editing, so let's go ahead and hit space to play, and you're making these cuts with your left mouse button, that you can select the cuts that you need to remove and then just hit control space with your other hand. So I end up finding that selecting with the mouse and then control space to remove that bit, hit space again, and then when you get to another part that you wanna remove, you just blade edit cut, select that bit and control space. It's just a much faster way of removing those bits from your timeline that you don't want than going all the way over from your mouse to the delete key every single time you need to remove something. So the next tip is that when you're editing a video that maybe goes on for a long time, has a lot of gap spaces, one way you can speed up your video editing process is instead of just hitting spacebar and playing it back at one time speed while you're editing your video, you can instead hit the L key once to go into play mode and twice to go into double speed playback. At least for me, many times, if I'm listening back to my own voice at double speed, I'm often able to keep up with it. So if you're able to play a video back this fast and still make the cuts as you go, then this can be an increase in your editing speed. However, I would only really do this on perhaps the first time through if you're making rough cuts and there are a lot of big gap spaces in your video because if you do hit L twice to go into double playback speed, as you can see indicated here, then it will speed up your video editing process, but it is easier to make mistakes as well. Okay, the third tip. So if you're into using markers to indicate different parts of your video, I like to use them for figuring out what my timestamps for a YouTube video should be, and I'll position them in the timeline. You can also position them down on your video clips specifically, by having them selected when you add the marker. And when you do that, the markers attached to those clips will move with the clip, not the position in the timeline itself. Now, um, so if you add a bunch of markers to your video, you may start renaming them. So if you add a bunch of markers to your video, you may start renaming them. Uh, whatever you use a marker for to indicate is really up to you. It could be something like uh, fixes that need to be you could use them for indicating things that need to be fixed. So you could say like color grade this as a note for yourself or someone else who's working on the project. Or you could use it like I do for timestamps. So this could be second tip for video. Anyway, when you have all of your markers set and you want to quickly find what went where, then you can actually access all of these in the edit index. So by default in the edit index, you're going to see a list of cuts and other edits that you've made to your video here, but you can actually use it to show just markers that you've added to your video clips by clicking on this little drop down menu, going to show markers and then choosing all. So when you have all markers shown, you can make it show 
the source in by right clicking up here on the columns and you can see the timestamps for each of those markers. So as I've indicated in other videos, this is really handy when you want to create timestamps because you can use these to mark the moment where each chapter in your video should start for a YouTube video. But of course, you could also use this to find other areas that need to be fixed in your video. For instance, if you have a color for changes that need to be made, we could just go over here to a red color. And so if you have a different color for each meaning of the markers, you could filter by color up here and then see all of your red or other colored markers listed nicely for you to access. And you can double click to jump to those markers immediately. So finding them in the edit index in this nice handy list is pretty helpful. Okay, tip for power buttons. So if you look in your media pool, by default, you're not gonna see this section here for power buttons. What power buttons allow you to do is to basically drag in effects or titles which you have created or modified from other videos, keep them stored inside of here, and then you can access them from any video project on your computer just by going in here, finding the master bin or any other bins that have been created in here if you needed to organize them. So by using power bins, it becomes an easy way to create and reuse different uh, video assets. So for instance, I have this adjustment clip I created in another video, and I can drag this over our video clips in the timeline. And now the effects on that adjustment clip are going to immediately be applied to the underlying video clips. That's what an adjustment clip layer does. It affects all of the video clips under it with the effects on the adjustment clip. So you can see here the zoom uh, was set to 1.7. That's why it's so zoomed in. And then in the effects tab, we have the watercolor. And I was able to save this over here and now I can reuse this effect in any project. So likewise, we could add a title to our video here. We can change any information about that title. So let's change the default text here. Now I can drag this into the power bin and now we have a copy of this edited title. So I'll just call this edited title. And once again, we can just drag it anywhere we want to reuse it even in other video projects. So if I left click here, you can see it still has that added in text. Now, how you actually enable the power bins so that you can see it is you go up to the view menu and you go down here to show power bins. And when you do it once, it should show up here by default in future projects as well. So pretty handy there. Okay, and the fifth tip I want to show, and you may actually already have a preview of it right here, as you can see this gizmo over here, is to use open effects and fusion overlays. So you can find your video overlays right here in this menu here. So you have one for open effects, and nowadays you also have one for fusion overlay as well. So what this allows you to do is to see any of the gizmos or basically visual indicators that can be moved around and adjusted for effects, or in this case, fusion compositions for your video. And so what these two overlays allow you to do is to see any gizmos associated with a fusion composition in the case of a fusion overlay. So that can include the built-in fusion titles for Resolve 17. So if you see in the menu, uh, most of these titles are actually fusion titles. So that's why you will get fusion gizmos. So you can click on the little handles and indicators to adjust your title without directly modifying the settings over here in the top right. That can be handy because sometimes it's easier just to set a position for things by looking at the screen rather than trying to guess a number. So just positioning the title where we want it to be. And then I guess this outer gizmo is for rotating the position of our title. So you can use those and position your title on the screen where you want. The only thing you gotta know is that in order to see the gizmos, you actually have to have the clip selected. So if I select a different clip, even if the title is showing on the screen, then we're not gonna see that gizmos. Likewise, if we click on the clip, but we're not actually positioned anywhere where that clip is visible, we can still see the gizmos for the currently selected clip. Also note, if we select two clips at the same time, it appears that they disappear. So you gotta be careful about what you're selecting and what you aren't. So the open effects overlays would apply to the effects you can drag and drop onto a video clip. And those are in this open effects menu inside of the effects library. So that would be everything from up here, resolve effects blur, to the very bottom, 
these effects that you can just drag onto video clips and modify them in some way without needing to create a fusion composition. So that could include things like this watercolor effect over here. So an example of open effects would be this watercolor effect. You'll find them over on the effects tab over here under open effects. However, this watercolor effect doesn't appear to have any gizmos. It doesn't really need to position anything. Uh, one that I do find is really helpful to have the open effects overlay with though is the light rays effect. Let me see if I can find that. So I'll search here light rays. Let's drag this onto this clip down here. And you can see that a bunch of light rays are being emanated from a certain point on the screen. Now I know by default that is way up here, right above the center of our video. And we can see a tiny little indicator. You could think of this as a light source position or a sun, whatever you wanna call it. And you can left click on this and just drag around the center point for where your light rays are coming from. So as we move around this little center point, we can see that the position of where the light rays come from has a huge impact on our final result. Now we can also keyframe this position as well. Uh, you might notice that while I move it, this X position and Y position are being adjusted. So that's what we're really modifying. We're changing this setting just in a non-numeric way. So I could position it at one point in time, set a keyframe over here. Now let's go halfway into this video clip and we'll just adjust this position. A new keyframe is gonna get set automatically. So we can just set the starting and end points really easily like that. Let's go back to the start, the end, and now let's go back to the start again and hit play. So we can watch our little point animate over a few seconds of time. And that could be one way to quickly and easily set visual animations for things like open effects or fusion compositions. Now, just one final note about the fusion overlay. If you do create a fusion composition or you edit a title over on the fusion tab rather than the edit page, then you're gonna see these gizmos there as well. So if you ever start going into the toolbox effects and then you grab a fusion composition, which is just a blank black clip, nothing on it, and then you can jump into the fusion page, add nodes, create your own effects, then you're gonna see the same kind of gizmos which once again you can use for positioning things visually rather than relying on purely just playing with numbers and then taking a look at if those numbers made it look good or not. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video and the five tips I wanted to share with all of you on how you can improve your video editing workflow process inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you found some or all of these to be useful. Thank you for watching. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.